Let's imagine it is 2030. What shall the situation in Europe look like then? We cannot predict the future, but we can try to imagine it. Future scenarios based on developments we see today help us to deal with the major uncertainties we face. Two key uncertainties form the framework for the four future scenarios you're about to see. Firstly, shall we see a future in which top-down government in Europe prevails or one in which bottom-up forces become dominant? Secondly, shall Europeans go further down the road of unification or shall we end up in a diversified Europe? In its extremes, this combination of key uncertainties leads to a scenario of a great Europe, a network of nations, a union of communities and a scenario of a European Spring. Let me take you first to the future scenario of Great Europe. During the crisis years, populist movements grow strong. At the same time, citizens disengage from European politics. Brussels ignores this and continues its top-down strategy to manage the crisis. From 2014 onwards, the European economy improves. Unemployment rates drop and consumer confidence grows. Support for populist parties declines. The UK leaves the Union in 2018 after the Cameron referendum. After the crises, the EU embarks on a renewed attempt at further political and social integration. The democratic deficit is addressed by transferring power to the European Parliament. By 2030, the Union has a constitution, a European banking union, a tax and a budget union. There is a union-wide minimum wage and there are European rules on social welfare, healthcare and pensions. Great Europe has a strong position between the other great regions of the world. People are less skeptical about Brussels. Everyone has a European passport. Young people move to where the action and jobs are. Many elderly enjoy retirement in Southern Europe or travel around. Everyone is truly European. Alternatively, things could take a different course. Imagine a network of nations scenario. During the crisis years, resentment against Brussels grows. Citizens lose their jobs, their businesses. They feel the pain of falling house prices, pension cuts and reduced services from their governments, while at the same time they have to pay more tax and face rising costs. The promise of the fruits for all, that a free market and a single currency in Europe held, are not being delivered. National states take back their sovereign powers and the idea of a one-size-fits-all EU is completely abandoned. The monetary union and the euro do not survive. In 2030, the EU is a single market, a trade association. Europe is seen as a soft power with a civic orientation. Free democratic member states pursuing the ideal of cooperation. Member states act with the speed and flexibility of a network instead of with the rigidity of a block. Citizens use their secondary European identity in a practical way, to travel for pleasure or work. They use the single market to their advantage when possible. Now they are no longer forced into its unifying regime, most people feel part of the European family again, but they primarily see themselves as nationals from their respective national states. A third direction in which the future might unfold is shown in scenario Union of Communities. Turnout at the European Parliament elections in 2014 is 20%. People turn their backs on the European project. European and national governments manage the crisis and their budgets. In many member nations, welfare state structures are dismantled to very bare basics. Individuals and communities are left to their own devices. People are more dependent on each other. By 2025, civil society in Europe is a widely branched network of communities organized along shared interests or local, regional and professional lines. In 2030, it is more important for your job, pension, healthcare or education to have a good social network than to belong to a country or the EU. Everyone is a member of multiple communities and associations. Philanthropy and social entrepreneurship thrive. De facto, there are two separate societies. 
the formal and institutional sphere of national and EU governments with a focus on economy and finance and an informal sphere in which many communities cooperate, shaping civil society to benefit its citizens. People avoid working with governments and steer clear of institutions. Participation in civil society is a must for most. People are aware that they belong to a national state and the EU, but living in a civil society formed by communities, their local and interest-based affiliations are much more important to them. Last but not least, it could also go like this. Watch a scenario of European Spring. An ever-growing protest movement rages through Europe. By 2015, almost all European citizens feel the pain of massive unemployment and austerity measures. Inequalities grow between rich and poor, north and south, and old and young. Support for union-wide solidarity fails. There are protests everywhere. Charismatic leaders with 100,000s of Facebook friends and Twitter followers win elections. Traditional political parties form broad coalitions to counter the new forces. In many countries, there is political instability. Around 2025, most national parliaments are half taken up by movements that use virtual liquid democracy platforms to determine their political agenda. In 2030, power goes to the people through new, mostly virtual forms of direct and participatory democracy, thus sidelining the union's institutions. People quickly mass-mobilize and align around specific issues. They choose their political leaders by voting them in and out of office using I like or I dislike. The transition to direct democracy and the emancipation of citizens is not an easy process. However, slowly but surely, people learn to use their new powers constructively.